Dallas uh, Christian, and then there was some involvement with an organization called PIA, which is Peninsula Interfaith Action. And the, the, the initial conception was that there was a population of kids, elementary school kids, in north central San Mateo who were being underserved. And by that I mean, it, it was the perception of the founders that these children were going home to either no parents or guardians. You know, there wasn't, there wasn't a stability at home. You know, could have been working adults. But they went home and really did not have a way to bootstrap or get support for doing their homework. And what, what, what we initially discovered was that the population of students, uh, at, the, at the time 70% uh, uh, African American, 20% Pacific Islander, 10% uh, Latino, uh, low income families, at least one grade level behind, minimum one grade level behind in reading, writing, mathematics. So the program began with three homework sites that we sorted. Uh, there was a site that was founded at Sunnybury Elementary School in Delaware, Martin Luther King Center on Mount Diablo, and at our congregation, uh, at the Unitarian Congregation on the corner of San Inez and Ellsworth. And the, the notion that we had was the kids would be flagged by their teachers as being um, a grade level behind. They would be recommended to the program. So, you know, so Jim, Jim's the elementary school teacher, the third grade elementary school teacher, and he sees Skip, who is behind a grade level or two, and the recommendation comes that this child would be very well served by getting after school tutoring support. And it was really focused on tutoring support. That was the initial conception. Um, and we'd meet with the, the parents or guardians, we'd meet with the child. You know, everybody signed a contract, non-binding contract. But the contract said to the elementary school, you're coming four days a week. You know, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday from three to five, and Wednesday from one to three. And we will help you with your homework. We're not doing it for you, but we're gonna help you with your homework. And that's that began. 17, 18 years ago. Three sites, 20 to 25 students per site, all in the San Mateo Foster City School District. Okay, So we were, at that time, supporting five elementary schools, including Highlands, right, right around the corner. And about two years ago, we opened up a fourth site at Park Elementary School. And that came through parents. There, there were, a, a, let me, let me back up a little bit. The demographic has, has changed dramatically. 95% of our students are Latino. Uh, but we now have some Turkish families that are part of the program. Um, still low income. Uh, in, in these families, education is very important. I mean, you talk to the parents and they will tell you over and over again. You know, they came to this country because they wanted their kids to be educated. They wanted their kids to have a, the, the life that they haven't been able to have. Um, but they are still low-income families. Spanish is predominantly spoken at home. You know, I'm a student who comes home to mom or dad, and mom or dad don't speak English or speak minimal English, maybe literate, maybe illiterate. But the kids aren't getting the support that they need to be able to go. And the issue is that children that are in the third, fourth, or fifth grade, and in fact in the second grade, if they're behind at that level, you know, at that early point, if they don't catch up, probability drops like a rock that they're not going to make it through middle school, they will not make it through high school, meaning they'll drop out. And then you have all kinds of social problems, all kinds of social issues. The ability to work, you know, needing public support, blah, blah, blah. It, yeah. I'm going to add in right here because yeah, as an educator at junior high, you look at what the kid has, it's called a QM folder. And every year the teacher is supposed to write a paragraph about that kid. If you start in second, first grade, sometimes the kids are behind. Second grade, if they aren't getting the support at home, you, you can almost see a trend in just where he's hitting them. Yeah. If they don't catch on then, it gets harder and harder for them to catch up because 
what you're teaching they can't grasp because they don't have the fundamentals to get there. And this this is the challenge. No, that's absolutely the issue. Thank you. I just a ab absolutely the issue. And it's and it's interesting because you know intuitively it just makes a lot of sense. If you have some programs that are out there that are supporting middle schoolers and high schoolers and playing catch up. They're trying to they're trying to just write the boat a little bit. And study after study uh, you look at the you look at the the literature and the literature is pretty unambiguous that the earlier you can catch these kids and, and course correct them, um, the higher the probability they're going to be successful as they matriculate through school. And and I can tell you that I mean we have we have put through about fifteen hundred kids through this program. I mean just a significant number of kids, and and I can cite over and over again. Children that have gone on to college, gone on to graduate school. Um, you know, I can tell you. I'll give you. I'll give you an example. This this one will work. Uh, third grade girl. Uh, father is from Mexico. Mother's from Colombia. Parents met here, got married. Um, Spanish is spoken at home. Uh, father speaks a little bit of English. Very committed people, very, very committed people. This third grade uh, girl, shy as can be, um, you know, there's something in her head, there's something burning in there, but she's just, she's not making it happen. And it's largely linguistic, right? Sharp kid, but does not have the proficiency, the English proficiency, so she came into our program. And I can tell you, so, she, so this young lady was in our program, third, fourth, and fifth grade. Those are the grades we support. In the fifth grade, she won the science contest for her school. She goes to middle school, and one of the most prominent college prep schools gets to her and says, we want you to come to our school, and we will give you after-school support and mentoring. So she's been doing that for a year, and the... The way this is lining up is, you know, unless everybody's misreading this, she's going to get a free ride to finish up her middle school and high school in this program. And this kid, who was shy, unassuming, is full of confidence. I mean, it, 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 I mean, I could tell you 20 stories right now of kids that I, I've, I've tutored because I tutor one day a week. The stories are profound, uh, absolutely profound. So. You know, what Homer Central does, I mean, the mission has kind of shifted a little bit. So it started out as providing tutoring support through volunteers, okay? People, you know, you, who volunteer a day a week, two days a week, whatever it is, and you work with specific students on getting their homework completed, but what has shifted is we're looking more and more at skills development. What are the underlying skills that they are missing? And we're providing more mentorship to the kids, and we're now doing more with families. So, for example, we started a parent advisory group um, last fall with the idea that we want to engage the parents more to engage more with their kids on homework. You got parents that are very committed. I can't tell you how many guys have come up to me who have said over and over again, I want to be a good parent. I need help becoming a good parent. You know, in, in Latin American countries, predominantly in Central America, the, the culture is the schools educate the kids, parents aren't involved. Well, that's not the party here. The party here is everybody's involved. Parents are involved, the school's involved, you know, the kids take responsibility. So part of what we are doing as an organization, now we have four sites, we've got about 95 to 100 kids. They're all from San Mateo Foster City. They're all pre-selected by their teachers. We have, uh, at each site, we have a site coordinator who coordinates what goes on during the day. For example, Charles Douglas is a site coordinator at our Martin Luther King site. Charles uh, was the principal of San Mateo High School. He's a Rotarian, uh, Foster City. Um, He's been the site coordinator literally for 14 years. He has three interns. The other piece of our program is we pay high school, some college interns, to 
B interns, um, three per site, because these students who are, we hope, bilingual, that's what we shoot for because so much of our uh, population is bilingual, uh, rather so much of our population is Spanish. The kids use the program not only to make some money and to gain some experience, but they use it for college, college applications. So we have really tried to encourage that. Uh, we, we try and encourage, we go to all high schools in the area to get volunteers because high school kids do a great job with elementary school kids. It's the most amazing thing. I mean, look, if, if you're a third grade boy, would you rather talk to me who's 60 or some kid in, in high school who's closer in age? Well, I know what I'd do, and it wouldn't be me. So, so we, you know, our volunteers are high school students. We actually have some middle school students who have been, who, who went through our program, who have come back to tutor kids. Uh, and it just blows me away. High school kids, same thing. Um, there's a member of our board, a woman by the name of Rosa Molina, who was a, an intern from San Mateo High School um, at Homer Central. Went on to college. We asked her to join the board. She's working. First in her family to go to college. I mean, th it's a great story. It's just a great story. So, so the, 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 uh, let, let, me, let me give you, actually this, yeah, let me give you uh, an idea of what it was like for me as a tutor. You know, I, I helped our kids with homework. I, we have adult children. Uh, we, have, we have adults, but they're still kids, like all of us. Um, I was on the board. I thought, man, I need to really see what's going on at a site. So I volunteer on Wednesdays. I work at home, I have a company in the city, work at home on Wednesdays, and I tutor from one to three. So the first session that I attended as a tutor, I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, we have workshops for tutors, but I, I didn't get there yet. So one of the, the site coordinator picked out this young lady and said, why don't you, Julie, oh, just call her Julie, why don't you go read a story to Matt? So Julie and Matt went into the other room, um, you know, and, and very safe, very safe environment, kids running around, and and Julie very reluctantly read a story to me. And the next week I was there, I singled out Julie, and I said, let's go read. And this went on for a few weeks, and then there were two Julies, meaning there were two kids that wanted to read. And two weeks later, there were three Julies, and they literally grabbed me and said, let's go read. And, you know, I started doing this thing with, with these girls. Um, in, they were third graders. No, I'm sorry. Now it's fourth grade. Now, now they're in fourth grade. And I'd walk in, and without saying hello, I'd say, pick a number from one to 30. And they'd pick a number out, and I'd say, you're one, you're two, you're three, in terms of reading. I wanted these kids so fired up about reading that they really became lifelong learners. And it's at a point now where one of the girls says, I don't need you today, Matt. I, I can do my homework just fine. And let me tell you, that's music to my ears because this kid is taking off. I mean, you can see it. So what, what, what happens is, you know, it's not just, it's not just Skip's got to get his homework done. That's not what it's about. I mean, that's what we thought it was about. I think it's evolved well beyond that because you have children that may have self-esteem issues. If they're falling behind, they're not feeling potentially real good about who they are. So part of the success factor is you want kids to take ownership of their homework and be responsible for doing their homework, but we want to also get behind their self-esteem issues. So there's a lot of great job. Man, you read so well. You know, there's a lot of that stuff because as a child's confidence level comes up, they're willing to take more risk for their education and take more responsibility for their education. So we have now, um, let's see, in the last year, um, we got a grant from Oracle. We now have 40 Chromebooks in our homework sites. Chromebooks are these computers that the San Mateo Foster City School District has purchased for um, the, the new educational system, Common Core. Kids do homework using these computers. 
they're going to be tested using these computers. So we put a grant proposal into Oracle, Oracle picked it up, and um, we've got Chromebooks in the side. Or, what's that? Somebody here from Oracle? Because I love you if you are here. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have another grant into a grant proposal into Oracle right now to get money uh, for tech analysts to help standardize what we're doing. If it's, if, it's, if it's my call, every child will have a Chromebook that they can use at home or central. We're looking at adding a fifth day. We're looking at Saturday programs. We already have evening programs. I mean, we have some evening programs where we invite everybody, families, kids that aren't going to Homer Central, kids that are going to Homer Central, and there will be a math night where, you know, there's crazy stuff that goes on. There are jars filled with jelly beans, and there are jars filled with pennies, and they're trying to estimate how many pennies and how many jelly beans are in jars. And they're measuring, you know, my length and my waist and all this other stuff. We want to, we want to make math more alive. We have a math science night where um, we bring in a guy who is this crazy, passionate science man. Uh, I, I, think he's a, I think he's a teacher somewhere. We've done this for years, and the kids have eyes out about eight feet. I mean, they are so excited. Uh, two weeks ago, we had an evening program uh, where we had somewhere around 70, what, well, I mean, I'm mixing up programs. Two weeks ago, there was a program that involved an evening program for parents on gang awareness. And while the parents or guardians, after dinner, were listening to a lecture in Spanish on gang awareness, San Mateo PD had one of their, their motorcycle officers come by. So we had prearranged this with pals. So this, this officer, Jerry, comes out, lights flashing, kids have their eyeballs out about eight feet, and Jerry speaks to the kids about bike safety brings information about, about um, you know, coloring books and all kinds of stuff that the police department have. But it was to talk with the kids about what they need to do to be safe on bikes. And, and then, you know, there were pictures taken, and because I'm, uh, frankly, a uh, cycling fanatic, that was reinforced. They come back in, I had a couple of road bikes, we talked about the parts of the bike, what you do, you know, why, why I look so crazy in all these bright colors, you know, what, you know, is this a good color at night? Is this a good color at night? Anybody in yellow or orange? So we're talking about all this stuff. So all of this is designed to reinforce um, the fact that, that our students need information, want information, they're excited as holy hell about getting information. And um, recently we introduced uh, about just under 400 books, new books into, uh, new books and some used books into Homer Central. So what we're trying to do now is, you know, there are plenty of books around, but we have a project, we're raising money to automate what we're doing. Because what we want to do is we want to be able to see every single book in our library. We want to know which kids are reading which books so that we can actually design programs that push more books to the kids that are excited about particular subjects. We've got a couple of buddies that, that do that. Yeah. How would you characterize the support that you provide children is, is it primarily just repetition or just doing more of something they're weak at or are you actually developing different techniques for different learning styles? Uh, good, good question. Well, <clears throat> number one, we are adjuncts to the educational system. So we're in constant contact with educators, many, many of the teachers that we possibly can be connected to, as well as principals. So we dovetail with what they're doing, but there are times when we will send a note or reach out to a print, uh, uh, an instructor and say, Johnny is not getting, you know, Pablo is not getting this assignment. Can we do something else to kind of work on skills? And nine times out of ten, teachers say, sure. So, so some of it is they have to get the homework done, but do they really have to get the homework done? Because if, they're not, if they don't have the underlying skills, the homework doesn't mean anything. But what the parents are saying is, yeah, but Pablo needs to get his homework done. Right? Juliana needs to get her homework done. So we are using all kinds of techniques to get um, information conveyed, manipulatives, 
these Chromebooks that, that uh, bring life to who they, you know, what these kids haven't seen. You know, I, I, for example, I spent a fair amount of time up in Alaska. My wife is from Fairbanks. We've gone up there, and one of the kids was doing a, 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 a report on bears. Well, I was all over it. I was able to bring some pictures from home of photos that I'd taken. And I just found out uh, two days ago that there's a, a webcam one of the national parks in Alaska that that is 24 hours a day. So I want to bring that into Homer Central to show these kids. Plus, plus the, the whole notion of mentorship. I've got a buddy that just retired from FedEx. And I asked Roger to come in and speak to the kids about flying. And Roger said, yeah, I still have my uniform. I'll come in. We are also doing more to bring Latino business leaders educators, um, you know, people from the tech space into Homework Central because we want them to model for their children, for these, for kids, what these kids could be. So, you know, I, I went in this program really wondering whether kids were smart enough, whether the parents really cared. You know, I was very, you know, I, I, I mean, I took a very critical eye and I can tell you within a week that all of those questions were answered. Kids are highly motivated, extraordinarily motivated children. Um, I would say eight out of 10 parents are extraordinarily motivated to support their kids. We need to figure out how to help them get there because some of, some of the parents are scared to death of the system. They don't know the educational system. They don't have that awareness. So part of the deal is we have to help them get there. You know, we're having, we're having a, a, a fundraiser tonight called No Homework Tonight. And, and I want to tell you about it in part because if you want to come, I want you to come. But beyond that, we have four students that are going to speak. So uh, each, one of the, e each one of the sites had their students write a little essay about why they, why they come to Homer Central. And one student was selected to speak. This is a big deal. Their parents come, their, kid, you know, their brothers and sisters come. It's a big deal. They're speaking in front of 120 people. And we give them awards, and it's a, you know, and all of the um, writing with pictures of every one of the children are plastered to the walls of the congregational church where we're having this. Got it. One minute left. Man, I'm on it. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, Can I buy another minute? <laughs> yeah. you, you commented earlier about. The uh, I would I would see you as probably a, uh, a gang's worst en enemy. I hope so. Um, so do you guys have problems with the gangs no. or anything? Else? No, not at all. No, but I think it's a huge it's a huge issue in North Central San Mateo. There's no there's no question about it. Yeah. Uh, please address the difference between this crisis and the crisis that I grew up in in a small mill town in Pennsylvania where we had influx of thousands of uh, DPS displaced persons from right. World War II. Right. So these families were wandering uh, all over Europe trying to find their, their home after they've been mm -hmm. displaced and destroyed and so forth. Mm -hmm. Tremendous trauma they went through. And they arrived here with that motivation to sky high, but parents in most cases didn't know or knew little English, if any. Um, but there was a difference. The success ratio, as I recall, those kids an instant immersion. No, there was no uh, English as his mother. Right. How could you have uh, 15 Central and Eastern European languages being known by a teacher? So mm -hmm. there was no help there. Mm -hmm. But but the success was was just incredible. And so there is. Uh, you already addressed some of it. You said that these parents are motivated. Well, those parents were motivated, mm -hmm. but couldn't help much. Right. Except that at home they were probably encouraged. Well, so we're doing. We're providing the backbone to support the parents, to support the families, uh, to, su to support their children. And, I, and I, I have seen a direct correlation, absolutely direct, unambiguous correlation with helping students, parents get more involved, uh, parents are engaged in the schools. You know, you've got tonight, uh, Christy Miller, who is the principal from Park Elementary School. I mean, we have, we have two of our sites have her students. She is, mom is from El Salvador, dad was from the States, just finished her PhD in education, some facet of education, bilingual. 
And she is a catalyst for change in the San Mateo Foster City School District. And, and just one more fast forward, and that is, we have an advisory board we started last year. On that board is the superintendent of the San Mateo Foster City School District. So Cindy, Cindy Sims has really looked at Homework Central and looked at the modeling. And what we ultimately are going to do is as we, uh, as our funding uh, moves up, we intend to open more sites. We, we want to bring in more volunteers. This program works. It absolutely works. Yeah. Matt, thank you very much. You're welcome. And